Hello everyone, uh, so Donald Trump or Hillary Rotham Clinton? We are now uh, six months away from the presidential elections 2016 and I can promise you, you will hear uh, this story played from all possible angles, uh, you will hear a ton of opinions and reviews and comparisons, uh, you will see and witness uh, two aggressive and possibly pretty nasty and negative campaigns and all I want to do here with my little talk is actually add one dimension. It's going to be the central and, Europe, and central in Eastern European uh, dimension. Uh, so we're not going to talk about the candidates and their personalities themselves. We're not going to talk about the campaigns. And we're not going to talk about the internal affairs of the US. So no politics, uh, uh, sorry, no politics, no education, uh, no taxes no healthcare bill or Obamacare, uh, no Second Amendment rights, nothing of this. We're going to focus purely of what these elections in November 2016 mean for Central and Eastern Europe in terms of United States foreign policy. And uh, just to begin our talk, it is important to understand one basic assumption, one very main assumption, which is that Europe matters less to the US ever since Oh Lord, probably ever since the end of World War II. And this is not such a bad news on its own, because it simply means that Europe is a relatively stable um, region of the world, and America uh, is focused on, on different parts of the world, on, on different corners of the globe, like China economically, and uh, Middle East in terms of uh, the national security. Um, but there are certain things that the US can help us address here in Central and Eastern Europe and uh, from this perspective the elections that happen uh, this year are very very important because um, standing against, against each other is a Democrat Hillary Clinton and the Republican Donald Trump what do they mean to our region well um, it's important to understand two aspects about Hillary and one is a simple fact that she was uh, the Secretary of State in the, four, the first four years of uh, the presidency of Barack Obama. Uh, if we assume that the foreign policy of, of, a, of the US, of the administration of any given president, is shaped or co-shaped and co-created by Secretaries of State, that means that Hillary had, well, somewhere on the spectrum from somewhat to a lot, or maybe percentage-wise, something between 20-25 to 100% of influence on the US uh, foreign policy towards pretty much any region of the world, including Europe. Um, add to this uh, the fact that she was the closest person uh, to the former, to the previous um, Democratic president of the US before Obama, and that was Bill Clinton. Between 1993 and 2001, the eight years of presidency of Clinton, many very important things happened in Europe. Uh, he took over pretty much in the immediate aftermath of the, of the fall of the Berlin Wall in uh, January 93, just days before uh, he became president. Czechoslovakia split into the Czech Republic and Slovakia. The war happened in Yugoslavia that was ended by, the, by his administration intervention uh, in 1995. And then in 1999, NATO was enlarged by, uh, by three most strategic and largest uh, Central European countries, Poland, uh, the Czech Republic and Hungary. So many important things happened and Hillary was not a direct participant or an influencer to these events, but we can pretty much assume and agree that, he, that she had uh, the first row seat of international events back then. So at the very least, she understands the importance of the US presence in the region. Let's contrast this with Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump has two main ideas and two main propositions when it comes to foreign affairs. Uh, the first one is an entrepreneurial or business person approach, which means uh, that the foreign policy be treated uh, as deal making, as business, as running your own business. Running a country as a business might be uh, a great idea in many different um, uh, fields, but I'm not sure if that's the best way to deal uh, with a foreign policy. Overlapping with this idea 
is uh, a tendency that will surely increase under Donald Trump to um, isolate the US more. By isolating, I mean focus on their internal affairs, which again, on its own, is not such a terrible idea. US has many problems uh, to address. But for Central and Eastern Europe, this means uh, a simple combination that any isola isola isolationist tendencies of the US and any entrepreneurial approach uh, to foreign policy will not be dangerous on their own. But if they combine and if they overlap on the timeline of history, pretty much, with the most aggressive and the most cocky, pardon the word, um, attitude and approach of Russia towards their interests in the region, in Central and Eastern Europe, then the region might start um, having some problems. Remember, deal making very often means appeasing or reaching deals and reaching compromises with the most aggressive um, bullies on the pay playground, the most aggressive players in uh, different fields of international politics. So, for example, in Southeast Asia, there will be China. Uh, further up north, in the Far East, there will be North Korea. In the Middle East, it could be Iran or Syria. But in Europe, when it comes to a central and eastern part of our region, that will most likely be Russia. And when it comes to isolationist tendencies, the space that will be potentially left by the US in uh, Central and Eastern Europe, in the Baltic States, Central Europe, Southeast Europe, must be filled by someone. This political sphere and diplomatic sphere and even a, an economic sphere, all this space that US is potentially to leave will be filled by someone. I don't really see um, Western, uh, dominating Western countries filling this because the UK or Germany have their own problems. However, at the same time, Russia is very interested in the region and it seems like the Russian capital, political, diplomatic and economic slash military is pretty much ready to fill any gap that the US will create. So just to sum up, we have two major facts of Hillary, about Hillary Clinton. She was a Secretary of State in the first four years of Obama administration and she was the wife of uh, Bill Clinton, the pretty much the last president that had to be very focused on Europe as a region and as a, as a point on the US foreign policy agenda. On the other hand, we have Donald Trump who's proposing deal-making in um, foreign policy, uh, return of um, isolationist tendencies, and we have a combination of these two propositions uh, with an increasing aggressiveness of Russia on an international stage. I will not give you any definite conclusions, this is your job here, but six months away from the elections, this is how I see the situation, again, from our regional uh, perspective. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like it, please like it. If you disliked it, please dislike it. Uh, I appreciate negative feedback as much as I appreciate a positive one. And if you really want to be the part of my channel, Maybe because politics is coming more and more to my channel. Uh, please make sure to subscribe and I will see you later.